According to a 2011 TD Waterhouse uh, women investor poll, only three in ten women say they have a financial plan. And 53% of women agree there are differences in the way women approach investing. And then again, another 45% of women think you need to have a substantial amount to invest. Now, these results highlight that many women may not be as in control of their finances as they could be, which is why our next guest has made it her mission to motivate women to take charge of their financial life. Joining us today is Susan Meisner, 20-year veteran of wealth management industry and author of this book, Your Money, Honey, A Girl's Guide to Savings, <laughs> Investing, and Building Wealth at Every Stage and Life Stage. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. So tell me, first off, I, I should say your book, I think, is you know quite clever because you've got some great tips and and everything Thank from you. dating who would have thought financial <laughs> tips around dating you know up to career choices and mm -hmm. and investing mm -hmm. um, but I think there's a, an interesting point you make that it's not so much that women want uh, consume information but they mm -hmm. just need to be communicated to differently about this I think that's the key point and you've nailed it on the head we say that the basics of finance and investing are not necessarily gender specific but effective ways to communicate those principles are and so we designed a book and a website that really spoke to women in the way they communicate in the way they relate to one another and using an anecdotes from real life to help them better get engaged in the financial game. Well, I have my daughter sitting over here, but it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because she's a much better investor than most of uh, the men that I run into in terms of the business. But mm -hmm. yeah, women, my observation, yep. tend to want to actually know the product. They want to experience it. Um, the best yeah. example I can give you that is my daughter recommended that uh, she should get into Lululemon, yeah. and that's about 50 bucks ago. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, much better choice girl. than mine. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. I'll have to turn to her for some advice. Um, it seems kind of incredible to me that you see, you know, that this is needed, let's say, in, yeah. in, in 2012. You would think that there's been so many strides made, mm -hmm. but is that not the case? There's been a lot of strides made. There's a lot of information out there, but we continually see, you know, confusion among Canadians about things like TFSAs. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of information. We are just not sure that it's effectively reaching women. And that's why we designed our website and wrote the book because you know we want to relate products and services and real life events into finance mm -hmm. let's talk about some of these real life events yeah. because let's say you're in your 20s yeah what's the kind of thing you need to be concerned about as a woman in your 20s well I think especially when you're going into a lot of women are in school student debt is a big issue right now so we want to get women when they're young helping to manage their debt through school helping to encourage them to save, obviously, because when you're young is the best time to start saving. Mm -hmm. and, and also dating. I keep coming back. It's, she has some really <laughs> pithy comments about dating. You know, don't let them to pick up the tab all the time because you're yeah. creating something and then you don't pick up the tab all the time because there's a lot of freeloaders out there. Absolutely. You know what? We deal with everyday tips in life and, you know, we want to help drive wealth in women's lives. And I think so much of the information that's out there for so long has been on penny pinching and we're very, very focused on wealth building, driving value in women's lives and in the lives of their families. What about the 30s? You said the 20s is all about, you know, going to school, student debt, so what's the kind yeah. of thing you need to think about in your 30s? Well, you know, a lot of women in their 30s, they're either moving in together with somebody or getting married, having a family, so obviously there's a lot of financial issues that are around that. And, you know, having, having children, you know, we um, see a lot of women that we talk to and they're saving for their child's education. And we always yeah. like to say, well, you know, you also need to be saving for your retirement because your children can borrow for their education, but you can't borrow for your retirement. Is that, is that some, I was going to say yeah, that women, sorry, point. you'll get a word in edgewise. No, no, it's all right. I, I figured this. Yeah, it's going to happen. Do women put them, put others in front of themselves when they're making their financial decisions? I think fun? in many cases they do. And I think, you know, yeah. it's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, you know, we definitely want women focusing on their own wealth creation. We think they have a, a lot of great skills that they can bring into the family to help drive wealth. So, you know, but, but they tend to put, you know, others in many cases ahead of themselves. Many years, sorry, many years ago, yeah. um, Japanese women were the big drivers of that economy and yeah. they did all the investing. Yeah. That's still true today. But one of the things that I did find was that the women do spend a lot, or did at that time, spend a lot of time doing homework yes. on these companies. Yes. So for a lot of women today, 
I'm hearing that they just don't know where to go and what, how to get at that. Right, and um, you know, we wanted to give them a place to go. That's why we designed goldengirlfinance.ca and that's why we wrote the book. You know, giving them easily accessible information. I mean, let's face it, women are very busy. They have very busy lives. They have many things on their to-do list. So at the end of a long day, we wanted to have information and a site for them to go where it was fun. We're making finance fun and I think that's the key because we can put all the information we want out there, but we need to get women to read it. Let me ask you a final uh, thought from you. What financial advice would you give to a woman that you would never give to a man? Is there anything or any, any anecdote or something that would fit into that? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She's like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, for, for women, I think it's like you need to start focusing on yourself and your wealth creation. You Certainly. actually wouldn't say that to a man all that. I don't, well, I don't know about that, <laughs> but, um, you know, I definitely want women to start putting themselves first, start creating wealth, start focusing more on creating value. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Susan Meisner, she is a Wealth of Management Advisor and co-founder of Golden Girl Finance and co-author of It Is Your Money, Honey, A Girl's Guide to Savings, Investing and Building Wealth at Every Age and Life Stage. All right, stay with us. Uh, when we come back, we still have our two to watch. We'll tell you where the smart money is moving. You're watching Business Day on BNN. Now you